Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and today we're in Psalm 33, beginning in verse number 1. Get your Bible, open it up to Psalm 33, and we'll begin in a minute. <clears throat> the Scripture Verse by Verse website is a place where you can study all of God's Word with me just exactly as we are doing today, verse by verse, only there. You can choose from four complete series, going on five. This is the fifth, with the New Testament already being completed here in the fifth series. But it's all there for you at thebibleversebyverse.com, where all you have to do is choose, click, and listen. And all you need to bring is a hunger for God's Word and your Bible. Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 33, verse 1. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is befitting to the upright. It is fitting to praise God. If you're walking with the Lord, he wants it. There's a time, <clears throat> certainly, for quiet reverence, but it is also okay to let loose and praise God at the right time, in the right place. God loves it. He talks an awful lot about his people rejoicing before him. God loves it. And if you love God... Your praise is a beautiful thing to him because it's coming from your heart. Two, <clears throat> praise the Lord with the harp. Sing unto him with the psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. In other words, God is saying, use some in instruments to enliven your praise to me. Like, we already saw God likes praise and God likes music when it is played unto him. Three, sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud voice. I should say with a loud noise. I like this too. God is saying, invent some songs for me if I've given you that talent. Write me some music. And make sure you play it skillfully, too. Play it the best that you can, because that's what God deserves. Four, for the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. Right means righteous. Truth means normal and natural, correct. God's word is is right, it is righteous, God's word is true, it is normal, it is correct. It's the right thing. God's word instructs us to do what is normal. Sin is the thing that's abnormal. Sin is unnatural. Going against God's word is always unnatural, and it's going to result in trouble every single time. You can have one member of a family um, who continually does things contrary to Scripture. And that just causes trouble if he or she is allowed to continue to do that. It's going to, one thing's going to lead to another. There's going to be a negative domino effect to that sort of thing because it's not normal. It's not right. Five, he loveth righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. God has jam-packed this world with all sorts of goodness, all sorts of good things for you and I to enjoy. Six, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them 
by the breath of his mouth. All the multiplied trillions of stars popped into the emptiness of space when God commanded it to happen. 7. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as in heap. He layeth up the deep, the depth in storehouses. God is the one who tells the oceans where they are supposed to be. He's the one who keeps the oceans where they are supposed to be. 8. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. When we come to God, it should be with awe, and it should be on our knees. When we talk to God, it should be with our heads bowed. 9. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. When God spoke, the world began. There was no world until God ordered it to appear, to appear piece by piece. That, my friends, is a God that should be feared, respected, and obeyed. <clears throat> 10. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of no effect. All Satan's power plays to defeat God have failed and will continue to fail, and all the ungodly joined together could not possibly stop the will of God from prevailing because it's impossible to beat God. 11. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. God has a plan for this world. This world is God's project, and he has big plans for it, and it will be the way God wants it to be. People can either get on board through Jesus Christ, or they can be moved out of the way because there's no third option. 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Government cannot legislate God out of business in this country. The government cannot make God the God of America because it is the preacher's job to teach the pure word of God, and it's up to people to say yes to Almighty God by repenting and receiving Christ. Government can't make Almighty God the God of this country through legislation. Modern evangelicals have dropped the ball for the last 40 years. They've been trying to rely on pol politicians to make this country righteous, so they've been teaching psychology, psycho psychotherapy, and political stuff so often in their messages instead of preaching repentance and the pure word of God, which would have gotten people saved over the last 40 or 50 years, which would have made for a better populace, which would have resulted in better people elected. Big mistake by modern evangelicalisms in the last several decades. And it continues on, it just gets worse. Because now there's so many people that aren't even saved that call themselves evangelicals. So many pastors that aren't even saved. You can tell that by the messages that they teach. Thirteen. The Lord looketh from heaven. He beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. God's vision is amazing. God's vision is also telescopic and microscopic and x-ray. All rolled into one because he can see all the way from heaven. He sees little things that we do like a microscope. And like an x-ray, God sees way beyond our, our acts and way beyond our words and right down deep into our souls. In fact, God even sees our motives. 15. 
He fashioneth their hearts alike. He considereth all their works. God fashioned our hearts. And that means that he fashioned our souls. God fashioned us to be different from each other. God knows how he has made us. And he observes how we are. We should be alike morally. But each one of us are gifted in our own unique way, meaning that God has fashioned us. God, and God has fashioned me to be different than you. 16. There is no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. The largest army in Europe could not save the old atheistic Soviet empire. It collapsed because it had no biblical foundation, and without biblical foundation, no one can stand, no family can stand, no country can stand. Witness the Tower of Babel. Witness Sodom and Gomorrah. Witness the Roman Empire. Witness the United States. 17. And horse is a vain thing for safety, neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. God continues. Now, God may choose to use someone or something to bless you, but it is God who blesses, it is God who should be thanked, and it is God who must always be recognized as the deliverer, the sustainer, the provider. Never lose sight of that, that foundational truth. 18. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, upon those who hope in his mercy. If you fear God, then you don't have to fear anyone else because his eyes are on you. God's watchful eyes on you should produce more confidence than if you had the support of many people and many things. 19. Be, excuse me. To deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. God's power works in partnership with his eyes. God does not watch his people for kicks, you know. God watches us to know what he should do to best take care of us to do what is best for us. 20. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. To wait for the Lord <clears throat> means to patiently keep doing the right thing and to trust that he is in control of all things, both good and bad. And to trust that God is working all things for our spiritual good long term. That's what it means to wait for the Lord. That's one of those evangelical sayings that, hey, just wait on the Lord. And then you walk away and, and the person that you said that to is scratching their head. What in the world does that mean? Just wait on the Lord. Oh, and if you ask, what does that mean? Then you feel like an idiot, so you don't ask. And they don't explain it to you. I'm explaining it to you. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. This is what that means once again. To wait on the Lord, to wait for the Lord, means to patiently keep doing the right thing. Patiently keep living the Word of God. And as you are doing that, in spite of what is going on around you, in spite of any hardships that you might endure for doing that, trust that He is in control of all things, both good and bad. Trust that God is working all things for our spiritual good long term. You may not see the benefits in this life, but to wait on the Lord is to persevere in doing what is right, knowing that at the very least in eternity, it's all going to be worth it. That's what it means to wait on the Lord. You're welcome. 21. For our heart shall rejoice in him, because we have trusted in his holy name. It is a fact that when you put your trust in God, and when you put yourself in God's hands and trust him, then no matter what comes, your heart will be glad. You'll have more joy than you can ever enjoy. The joy would be too much for you to handle in the flesh. 
And it all comes because of trust. 22. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. In other words, he says, Lord, we are dependent upon you because we know how much you care about us. See, we can, we can depend upon God with confidence. And we will depend upon God with confidence if we understand just how much he cares for us. Okay, stop in there. Study all of God's word with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. Remember to be a part of this ministry. Pray for me and God's word. That makes you an immediate and extremely important part of Scripture verse by verse. So please pray. And when you take a break from studying with me at thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead because that makes you a part of this ministry as well. See you next time.